Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the correlation coefficient. And to do so, it incorporates the spread of both x and y. And in it, that's where we introduce the correlation, the, pro the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, or rho, or sometimes it's r. Rho is for the population, r is the statistics. And this is the formula for rho, the correlation coefficient, the covariance over the variance of x, variance of y square rooted. Well, in your formula booklet, this is the formula you have for r. So how do these relate? They don't look the same. And so in order to do so, we're going to have to do a little bit of computation on this here. And recall from the last video, we talked about the covariance was equal to expectation of x minus mu x times y minus mu y. But what I had also said just before I'd shown that was it was the same as 1 over n times the sum of all the x's minus x bar times all the y's minus y bar, which is the same thing. Well, if I multiply this out, I get the sum of x i y i minus x bar y i minus y bar x i plus x bar y bar. And so then I come along and I'm going to multiply this out. I have the I can apply my summation, so it's going to be 1 over n, the sum of x i y i minus 1 over n, the sum of x bar y i minus 1 over n, the sum of y bar x i plus the sum times 1 over n of x bar y bar. Well, if I think about what all this means here, and I'm trying to get it to look like this. Well, this I'm just going to keep 1 over n, the summation of x, and I'm going to i, y, i. If I think about this, x bar is constant. And so I can pull out that constant, and then it's going to be times 1 over n times the sum of y i. Well, this is the sum of all the y's divided by n. That is simply just y bar. So I can replace this as y bar. Similarly, y bar can come out. And this is x bar, 1 over n times the sum of all the x i. That's x bar plus 1 over n the sum of x by y bar. Well, if I add all of these up, that's going to be the same thing as n. There's n of them, so it's n times x bar y bar, and so those cancel. And so I have x by y, y bar minus an x by y bar plus an x bar y bar, which is 1 over n square root of x sub i, y sub i, those cancel and I get minus x bar y bar, which is not what is here, but it's close. It's off by a factor of n. So let's go to the bottom of the fraction. This is the top of my fraction. Now, I had said rho is equal to the square root of the variances. Well, this, again, is not the variances. So let's work on the variances here a little bit. What if I do remember? from the formula, from the formula booklet, this is the formula for variance. And so what I can say is I'm going to put this together. I know that we said that rho is equal to the covariance of xy over the square root of the variance of x times the variance of y. Well, I've just shown the covariance equal to this. So 1 over n, the summation of x, y minus x bar, y bar over the square root 
of the variance of x. Well, that's just going to be x squared, the sum of x squared over n minus x bar squared times the sum of y squares over n minus y bar squared. And I'm trying to get to this particular scenario here. If I cut it, let's move it down. I'm trying to get to this. Well, if I consider this, and if I multiply by, simply if I multiply by n over n, which is 1, this top fraction here, well, the n's cancel. I get the summation of x i y i minus n x bar y bar divided by, well, if I multiply by n, if I put it underneath the square root, it becomes n squared underneath the square root. And I'm going to split these n's up. One n will go here, and the other n will go here. If I, the first n goes in there, and I get the sum of x squared minus n x bar squared times the sum, multiply this one n in here, the y squared minus n y bars squared. And this is going to be square root of all this, which is indeed exactly what the formula has for me. So it is, in essence, this formula that we have is, in essence, the covariance over the variance of x and the variance of y which is one way that's a little bit easier to remember. This is in your formula booklet, but you've got to recognize they're really the same thing, except this has been multiplied by a fancy value of 1 as such. OK, so one thing that I can always say is note that rho is always between negative 1 and 1. And what does that mean? Well, if rho is equal to negative 1, that means it is a perfect linear line trend with a neg uh, po negative slope. If rho is equal to positive 1, well, then it has a positive slope, and it, all the dots are exactly on that line. That is what that means. It is the perfect relationship. But anywhere in between here, rho is a measure overall of how linear the two variables are, of how linear the two variables are. And if there's a strong correlation, it does not mean causation.